Heyo! I filmed a video with my mom talking about our August reading challenge, but I never did an intro because I felt awkward and I was on a Zoom call. So, um, so every year for the past however many years, um, my mom and I plan a August reading challenge for the month of August in which we just read as many books as we can and we make a Facebook page for it and invite a bunch of our friends. Um, We've had a really big group the last couple of years and it's been really fun. Uh, we have lots of challenges you can complete and different like activities. It's always a blast. And I mean, the last few years I've read like no books because I've just been busy and emotional, but you know, <laughs> this year we're doing it a little different. We kind of toned down some of the things and made it a little bit easier to curate based off of um, your own shelves since a lot of people are stuck indoors. You don't really have the same access to libraries and bookstores as usual. Um, so yeah, in this video we're just going to talk about our TBR. Our TBRs are always really large because both me and my mom are like super crazy and we love to find a book for every single challenge. And in the past it's been like 25 something challenges. We usually never read that many. <laughs> um, so this one I think we each, we have like 15 or 16 books. I doubt I'm going to read all of those in a month, but I like to get all of the challenges complete and have a book for all of them because I have a big stack I can pick from so depending on what I'm in the mood for so anyway that's all that talking um I don't know which one I'm gonna post first so if I look the same in more than one video I'll deal with it introduce yourself <laughs> that's that's on that's you <laughs> Um, I'm Marisa's mom. <laughs> a real yeah. life Karen in the flesh. Real life Karen. <laughs> okay, so today we're here to talk about our TBRs for the August Reading Challenge. Yay. You have all your books? I have all my books. Alrighty, and we're just gonna... <laughs> I'm reading all of these. <laughs> Actually, this is my TBR. Ooh, all of those. Oh, yeah. Wow. Whoever's room that is, they must have good taste. Well, I'm just going to start before it takes too long. Um, so the first challenge is this just in. Read your most recently obtained unread book. Well, I haven't picked this one yet because it is too early in July for me to pick that because I will most likely buy a book between now and August 1st. I did have a book that I've that I've recently bought than I thought I was gonna do, but um, I read another one by that, or I started another one by that author to see if I'd like it. It was the same characters and I didn't like it. Oh, <laughs> which and one was then, that? Um, this is The Anatomy of Murder. Mm -hmm. And this is like number book in the series, number two in the series, so number I- Number book? Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I'm having that same problem because I originally had Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater because that was my rotation purchase, but then I went to the bookstore on Sunday, and we're going to the bookstore again today, so I'm like, but also I'm kind of like, do I just stick with, and so I'm kind of thinking, I'm like, maybe I do this one, because it's my most recently, like, purchased book that I got, like, full price, wasn't like a used bookstore. Yeah, but that's fair. Yeah, but we'll see. Challenge number two is Stronger Together, read a book by a, by POC author, Am I going first? Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have this one, In the Time of the Butterflies by Julia Alvarez. I don't know too much about it other than I started listening to it uh, last month on Scribd. And about a, I listened to about a chapter and I kind of liked it, so. Oh yeah, I technically have like three, <laughs> but the one I'm doing specifically for this challenge is uh, Half of a Yellow Sun. And her name is so beautiful, but I will not pronounce it right, so I'm not going to try. Um, her last name is Adichie, though. I do know that because we read some of her short stories for my Elements of Narrative class. So we're going to go with that. Her writing's beautiful, and I loved the short story we read, and it's like won awards and stuff. So I mean, like. And you, um, you are half of a yellow sun. Hey! <laughs> Challenge number three is brighten up your day. Pick a book with a brightly colored spine. Oh, before dark. Before dark. Where'd you get yeah, that? Right. 
I found that at this wonderful little library in Magnolia. <laughs> it's a cute little um, community library. It looks a lot like the one right behind you. <laughs> it shows so, up a lot less bright on the screen, but it's like, say it's, it's like a fluorescent yellow. Yeah, green. fluorescent yellow and neon green. So according to Marisa, it's kind of scary and... Well, I haven't read it. <laughs> oh. I read another book by her, okay. and I enjoyed it. Terrifying and haunting. Ooh, ooh. Mine is also in the green color scheme, and is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer, because it's got this bright green nonsense going on. And I, like, started reading this forever ago, but then I never finished because school, story of my life. I read it for the challenge two years ago. Challenge number four is Stranger Things. Read a book in your least read genre. Uh, mine would be sci-fi. And this is it's a Demolished Man by Alfred Sester. I read another book by him two years ago for the same challenge because I don't read very much sci-fi. And I really, really enjoyed um, the book that I read a couple years ago um, by him. So I have this one on my shelf. So I thought I would... Read this one. Um, I am going the same route when reading sci-fi because that is also my least read genre. I can actually remember the last time I read a sci-fi. I think it was when I read Ender's Game in like 2017. So like it's been a hot minute. Um, it was in between two books and I was having a hard time and I eventually decided to read one of them this week and then just one of them for the challenge. So this is called Wool. Oh, by yeah. Hugh Howey. It's a lot of talk about it. I don't know much about it. All I know is that I was watching a booktuber talk about it and they, it was like something, they're like trapped in this, like, it's like a dystopian sci-fi. If you're like convicted of something, you sometimes like are sent outside because they need to like regulate their population. But then as soon as you're set outside, you're like instantly disintegrated. And so like, when you look outside, it's all like desolated and there's all these like dead people, stone carcasses or stuff. I don't know. It was a really terrible description, but it was something like that. And I was like, that sounds dope. I want to read that. So challenge number five is spoil yourself. Read a book from your most read genre. My most read genre would just be uh, literary fiction, adult fiction. Um, Another one I got from my favorite library in Magnolia, Things in Jars by Just Kids. I've read others by her and liked and been wanting to read this. Marisa said it was very good, so. It's like kind of that like Victorian-esque aesthetic detective with mythological ghosts and monsters and stuff kind of vibe. I was deciding between two books and I was having a really hard time because one of them was like, this is smaller, so it'll work better for the challenge. But it was a speculative horror. And while horror is like my favorite genre, I wouldn't say it's my most read genre. If we're being like technical, my most read genre would be literary or like classics and philosophy because I read a lot of that for school, but I wasn't counting that. Um, my most read genre is just like speculative, like weird speculative urban fantasy, paranormal-esque things that just don't really fit. This is called The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith, yet another book that my favorite booktuber recommended. Um, it's about the head librarian of this library in hell where all unfinished stories go. And there's something to do with like a evil book or something. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. It just sounds really cool, so. Challenge number six is Memory Lapse. Reread a book that you remember liking but don't really remember much about. This is a book called The Velvet Room by Zilpha Keatley Snyder. It's a very old book. Uh, it was first published in 1965. This is a book that was one of my favorites when I was like in junior high many, many, many years ago. <laughs> and I don't really remember very much about. I had talked about it to Marisa when she was younger, so she and read it and so yeah. I marked it is her copy and I'm going to reread it and see if I still like it as much as I did when I was 12. I read it and loved it and then was obsessed with making my own velvet room and probably still own. No, we turned that velvet into my Inej costume. costume for Six of Crows. <laughs> <laughs> so right. that costume is made out of the velvet that I was going to use 
to make my velvet room. So you have to read the book to understand that. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Oh my God. So um, I'm reading The Girls at the Kingfisher Club by Genevieve Valentine. Um, I read this book like a good, I don't know, three, four years ago and was like obsessed with it and like made everyone I know read it, or at least anyone I could convince to read it, read it. It's basically 1920s, 12 Dancing Princesses at the time like that was that was my stuff like it was historical and a fairy tale retelling it was like that's all I was writing too so like all right number seven is numbered pages so that's bottom of the shelf first book from writer left based off of what's your dominant hand so we we cheated a little bit on this because I forgot about this challenge and my books are like spread throughout the house and there's a lot of my books here in Maurice's room and so I had already gone through the house gathered every single book that I might possibly want to read and gathered them all and had this huge mountain of books in the living room and then I came to this challenge and was like oh oops so Marisa was here so we just gathered them all up made a big stack I asked my husband to pick a random number which he did and then we counted up and came to this one <laughs> So, Which is good because we I wanted her to read that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is The Truth by Nick Cutter and another scary, I think I have a lot of horror scary movies or books this, this challenge. So. Yeah, that's another book I told her to read. It's one that I have very mixed feelings about because again, it's one of those books that like isn't top tier literary like fiction horror stuff. It's more like pulp horror and it was just so disturbingly terrifying that I couldn't deal but I liked it so I like every time I think about that book I just cringe but like also not in a bad way it's really weird so I'm excited for you to read it I kind of was on the same boat because I did this last one Friday when you came over and we were doing all this but then yesterday I rearranged all of the books in my apartment because we got a new bookshelf and so <laughs> because my boyfriend's mom is like an angel so now I have all new shelves and so I was like oh I can redo all of my counting things but then the first one to the right on the bottom shelf was either the giant like 800 page Frederick Douglass biography I have or Dune <laughs> like, I'm not gonna read either of those this month and so I just decided to stick with my original Rainbirds. It's about siblings. Um, this Japanese boy hears news of his sister's murder and it's translated. And so like, those are my favorite themes and translated books are always really beautiful. So challenge eight, free for all. Uh, a classic that is public domain. Guess what I picked, Marisa? Jane Austen. Oh no. So... We joke about Jane Austen a lot because everybody loves Jane Austen. I'm not like the biggest fan, but this is one that I've been wanting to read for a while just because it keeps popping up. And I like to read books that when I read other books, they reference the book. I read a couple things that were referring to characters in this book. And so I thought, well, perfect excuse to force myself to read Jane Austen. <laughs> I want to read them because I'm like, I'm an English major. I need to be well read. I just haven't gone around. To uh, my public domain book is The War of the World. I just moved and there's this weird thing, like this weird, right. like those big, what are those things called? Water, like yeah. things uh, that are in holes and there's the big ball and stuff. Water tower. And I think it's like an it too, because under the water tower is where Pennywise takes all his floating children. Anyway, off topic. We have one of those and it looks like one of the creepy monsters from this because I've like seen like other adaptations and like artwork of it. I just haven't read it. So I kind of want to read it because I know it's supposed to be really good. And Challenge nine. This has two parts. So part one is a friend like me. Have a friend pick your book. Right. Part two is people's choice as in we put a poll in the Facebook group and had everyone vote. This one's winning right now. Really had been wanting to read this one. And so that looks like that might be winning. Um, my poll right now, this is in the lead, which is the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which I'm not mad about because I do really want to read this. I've had this for so long and I keep 
trying to read it. I think this was in my challenge last year and I didn't do it because I read no books last year. So, um, and then the first part of friend pick, I don't have the book with me. It's over there and I really don't feel like going and getting it. Um, on Sunday, me and my friend Mac went to the bookstore. I had him pick out a book for me. He picked out a book called The Testing. It's a young adult book by someone whose author's name I forget. Um, I remember starting like trying to read it like a hot minute ago because I looked at my Goodreads review and it looked like I hated it so that's a little awkward but also I it was during that phase where my book tastes were like very weird and like very much not what they are now so I feel like I was just being like a pretentious 13 year old a dystopian-esque thing where like you have to pass this like really intense test to like go up like classes and so if you want to like go to college and have like any sort of technically like middle upper class life you have to pass this like super intense test but I, I, just, I just read your review of it so. I read it and I was like oh that's awkward but I was like <laughs> I, I like really went off and I was like yeah. I don't even remember reading it though so that's the thing so I'm definitely gonna try again because it does sound interesting and I'll, I'll feel I felt really felt really bad so <laughs> the next one is Bite size, read a book that's under 200 pages. Mm, utopia. Shout out to Dr. Amaro's. They so, can you read it then, twice. Yep, yeah, just another one that gets referred to that I've never actually read. So it's just like one of those books that you can read really quickly and you don't really know why you read it or like what sense it makes, but like there's like deeper literary discussions you can have about like. The idea and concept of a utopia and like all that which I'm taking my English capstone this fall on utopia and dystopian literature with Dr. Ambrose so we'll probably be reading that a third time. <laughs> my under 200 page book is Speakeasy by Catherine M. Valente. So this is funny because this is yet another 1920s retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses and their names are so similar because it's like Valentine and like Valente. So like, remember the next one is Not to Flex. This is getting into the mega challenge territory. Not to Flex is read an award winner. I don't remember what year. It was either 2013 or 2014. This was the uh, Goodreads Award winner, um, Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. This has been on my TBR for a while. What's that TV show we used to watch, Marisa? It's the guy that. Which one? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Forever. They yes. Forever. Yes. They canceled it. It reminded <gasps> me a little bit about this because I think she like keeps dying and come back. Yeah. No. Okay. This is funny. Uh, on Sunday at the bookstore, I found a copy of it, and I was like, "Hey, this is the book that my mom's reading." And then I read the description of it, and I was like oh my god I need to read this this sounds so good so I'm not going to do it for the challenge but now I have my own copy <laughs> yeah she like keeps dying but like so it's it goes across like early 1900s all the way to like post-war and it's like the whole thing is like what if you could live again and again until you got it right which is like yeah. a really vague thing yeah so I agree it's like very much like forever the tv show which should not have been canceled henry morgan was robbed <laughs> henry morgan that's right i'm like what was his name so my award winner is sing unburied sing a novel by jasmine ward um this i think i got again because of a booktuber recommendations because my life is just in their hands evidently but it won a national book award during a year i don't know what it's about Read it. I know it has to do with families and like family dynamics and like family dynamics are also another one of my favorite things in books. The next one is Back in My Day, Read a Memoir. Another one I got from Marisa's library, uh, Knox by Ann Carson. She calls it an, how do you say that word? Epitaph? 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 Epit ep yeah. Wait, for her brother who died. Um, and she, and this, it looks like it's a huge, huge book. It's more like kind of like this interesting like scrapbook replica of a scrapbook she made. I think it'll still be a challenging read because even though it's short, it's one that will... You take your time with it. Yeah, you want to reflect on it and, and it's like, I mean, poetry, you don't just... Yeah, that book is fantastic. I like it because it's like such a beautiful depiction of grief, but like without really even saying the word, like it's very like subtle... Like you have to think about it. My book that I picked 
was The Years by Annie Ern 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 something. And guess what? It was a book to recommendation. <laughs> um, no, I went on this like binge where I was watching this video by um, a reader who I really like because he reads a lot of like high end like literary books and he made a video on like what his opinion on what the best books of the 20th century were so far. And so I wanted to read them and like see what my thoughts were um, to become more well read. And this was one of them. It's yet another book about grief and families. It's during the periods from 1941 to like 2006. The next challenge is GPS. Read a book that has the place name in the title. This is one I've had on my shelf for a long time. I'm not sure why I haven't read it yet, but this is Molokai, which is the name of the island in Hawaii. Many years ago, they would, people who had, um, leprosy were sent to this island. Anyway, I, I, I see it referenced quite a bit. It's supposed to be a really good book. I it looks beautiful. See it on awesome. a lot of lists a lot of times, so. I have The Witches in New York by Amy McKay, which I got at, like, the Amazon bookstore, like, last year, and I really do want to read it because it sounds really cool, and the characters have, like, really weird names, like, Sympathy and T. If I don't have time, if I'm like just not able to do one more big book, I do have Brooklyn by, I really am going to butcher that name, so I'm not going to try. There was a movie that was based off of this um, that I watched like a hot minute ago, and I really, really loved the movie. I thought it was beautiful. And it's about Ellis Island and an Irish girl who comes to Brooklyn and about her struggles with leaving her family. And All right, <laughs> the second to last challenge is homeschooling. Read a nonfiction book on a topic that you've been wanting to learn more about. This is one I just recently bought. It is a sewing book, which uh, it's, it's got patterns in it, so I don't know if I'll like actually like read every single word. The author, she does like a type of applique, and it's all done by hand, and I don't know if you can like see very, very well, but she does this like hand stitching mm -hmm. applique. My goal would be to read through learn some new techniques, and actually make something from this book in a month. Wait, you are taking on more challenges? <laughs> you? <laughs> this is just Enlightenment Philosophy in a Nutshell by Jane O'Grady. I like sort of read a chunk of this earlier when I was referencing it for a paper. Um, and it's just like really like broken down, simplified, covering a bunch of different thinkers. The last one is Scavenger Hunt which was just exactly that. It was just a long, weird string of things you had to do, like counting and words on covers and blah, blah, blah. I did my scavenger hunt here in Marisa's room and ended up with What I Leave Behind. It's not too long. It's just a really great book for a challenge. <laughs> yeah, it's a really <laughs> easy read. Even I don't if I don't it. like it, I can actually get through it. And it sounds interesting, so. Here's the tea. I did this twice at my bookshelf just to see on like different bookshelves to see what I get. And I ended up with a few like books that I thought both would work. And then I was going to try it at the bookstore just to have yeah. fun. That went terribly. Oh no. Like I'd either get like a book this thick or like one time I got, I literally think it's that Amish romance you read a few years back for least read genre because I recognized the cover and I was like, why me? And when I redid my shelves, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it one more time. And the book I get is the book I'm going to read. No if, then, but, uh -oh. whatever. And then <laughs> uh -oh. I got Dragonfly by Layla. No, I it's like World War II espionage woman, but it's really big. It's like almost 600 pages. So... Oh. That's why I was like, oh my God, why would I do this myself? But I decided it, the chapters are really short, so I'm just going to break it up and read it over the course of the month. And I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to read it. I'm going to make it happen. That is the book. Any closing remarks? No, other than, okay, your dad, Marisa, he also seemed very concerned that, that I was still going to try to read all these because now that I'm working for him full time, he's concerned that me trying to read all these will cut into my productivity. Well, tell Stephen 
from me, a message from his daughter <laughs> that he should do the challenge. He is. Oh, he is? I, I, can I tell you what book he picked for Spoil Yourself? Oh, no. Yes. What, what genre? Jack Reacher. Yes. <laughs> is it a Jack Reacher book? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, mother. Thanks, daughter. For joining us today. Um, I will, I'll talk to you later. All right. Sometime. Okay. Family love. <laughs> Okay, bye. <laughs>